What up, everybody? Let's talk about it. This is a religion podcast with your host, Tom Foster, Real Tom. Whatever you want to call me, I don't know. We're going to talk about some stuff. We're going to figure some stuff out, and uh, who knows? We'll get into it right now on the religion podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a religion a podcast with your host. You heard it in the beginning, Revton, whatever. Whatever you're going to call me. It's all good by me. I don't care. All right, I'm out here. I am uh, wanted to talk to you guys and I had a couple things in my mind um, this week. Uh, it's been a little bit since I've uh, sent out a podcast, uh, but I want to get right in this thing. This title, episode 502, is entitled, I'm the MF greatest i'm the mother fudging mama. greatest right i'm the mf greatest and uh i know that's a title that um maybe maybe uh you're not real comfortable with or you may think oh, who's this guy calling himself the greatest but i am the mother greatest and we're going to talk about that uh a little bit today um we live in a strange time you know, where everybody's called special and, um, you know, I mean, whatever, you know, I don't, it's whatever people, people call each other, you know, all kinds of names, but I mean, I'm okay with people calling each other special, you know, like you're, Hey, you're special, you're special. And I'm, you know, I, I, I think that we're all kind of special, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're all unique and, um, I'm not, I'm not concerned about people considering themselves special, the the issue I want to talk about today is what are you doing with your specialness, your speciality? What are you doing with it? What what I mean? What if you were so special? Just calling yourself special doesn't make you special, right? Like you know, just I can call myself a doctor, but unless I have the credentials to follow that up, I'm not a doctor. You I mean you can come to me and say, hey Anton. I've got this thing on my arm right here. You know, it hurts when I move it. And I can say, well, my name's Dr. Payne, which obviously, brothers and sisters, best doctor name ever, Dr. Payne, right? So my name's Dr. Payne, and uh, I will take a look at it. Well, where'd you go to school, medical school? Oh, I didn't. I'm just calling myself a doctor. I don't think many people would want me doing much surgery or research on their problem just because I called myself a doctor. I can kind of feel the same thing about this whole special, special, everybody special. Because, excuse me, take a drink of my special drink here. <sighs> yeah, it's good stuff. Just because you always call yourself special doesn't mean that you are you are qualified to you know in the term of special. I do believe that we all, like I said in the beginning here, I do believe that we all have special qualities. We have things that you know that um, you know, are special about us. But just calling yourself that doesn't doesn't change the game. It doesn't it doesn't help you. That's the big thing. It doesn't it doesn't do anything for you. Um, so you know he, he, what I'm getting at here is. Everybody wants to be special, but nobody wants to differentiate themselves, right? And, and, and they want to, they all want to, uh, you know, do the same thing, become Insta-famous, become, you know, YouTube-famous, which is fine. But, but, but how are you doing that? How are you differentiating yourself? And, you know, what is special about you? Because I believe that that, that authenticity of who you are is actually what's going to make you better become famous or become special, you know, and, and be that you're going to have to really, really dig into the uniqueness of yourself before any of the other stuff that you want actually becomes reality. You see, cause everybody's wanting to be seen right now. Everybody wants to be seen, be seen, be seen, be seen. And if you're not, you know, and that's the big thing right now and that, and that's fine. But the problem with that is, is what it does is it creates this, this like separation of reality. And see, that's what's really been on my mind and it recently is that when we, we want people to see us, but we only want people to see certain qualities in us. We only want people to see certain aspects of us. You know, that's why, like, like I said, the social and stuff like that's so popular is because we can filter 
what people see about us. And what that does, though, it creates a hidden society, you know, because people are showing us what, what, what we want to see from them or what they think we want to see from them. And what happens is it builds these layers and layers of separation between us, our real self, and the people that we're connected to. And see, that, 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 that there's an issue with that because the realness, and we've talked about authenticity last time, but the realness of who you are is actually what is required for real connection. I know, I know. It sounds like, you know, I'm talking gibberish right now. But in order for you to connect, you have to be able to be real. That's the problem with a lot of relationships and marriages and, 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 and just, you know, friendships is that people are connecting at these superficial fake levels, but they're not connecting at like, you know, a real level. People don't really know one another. And see, that's, that's, that's kind of the the issue that I'm seeing overall and all this stuff. And, and, and what we got to do, if you want to be, if you want to have connection, you want to be in a great marriage, you want to be in great friendships, you want to have success in, in life. You got to become real. You got to get, you got to put your, you, you got, the thing of it is, and people don't know on the real side of me, nobody wants to see that because that's ugly. Well, okay. I get that. And I understand exactly what you're talking about, but the, what you got to do is you got to, you got to dig into that, there's a thing in, in I, you know, I coach wrestling and I do, you know, talks and things of that nature. And I'm a you know, minister uh, or what do you want to call it? Now, you know, I get the microphone on Sunday. and I talk to people. Um, but the thing of it is, is you, what, what we got to do is we got to dig into that and we got to attack the problem. You see, that's my issue with a lot of the self-help stuff is that a lot of times self-help is just telling you how, you know, how awesome you are. You're incredible. You're amazing. You're, well, that's true. But if you feel like a piece of shit, C-H-I-T, because it's Christian cuss words, Christian shit. Okay. You can't say the S, you can't say the S, the S, you got to say the C, it, because then you're not cussing. Okay. You get what I'm saying, right? You hear what I'm saying? Check one, two. Can you hear what I'm saying? shit right okay so that's what happens though right if we we just get this self-help or we we look out there and we put all this stuff on us and make us look really good for instagram really good for facebook really good for all this social media and this that, and the other what happens is we layer ourselves and we and we get told all this amazing stuff and we believe it but we just add it on top of the brokenness if you have a broken board and, and you just couldn't put things on top of it it doesn't matter how thick the board is right or how special the wood is if it's broken eventually the more stuff you pile on it all it does is add weight and eventually okay. that's a that's a board breaking okay. Okay. right there you break Right. And that's what happens. We let, we add all this stuff, all this pressure of being this or being that or being special, being the, and we take the self up. Well, I'm supposed to just pull together and just be, that's fine. But the problem is, is if you don't fix the problem, you break, you break. Okay. So, so what I would rather do than add on the self help and add on all the things and the, you know, all the stuff on the external, all the social media stuff. What I would like to do instead is I'd like to actually fix the broken part, fix the issues, fix the problems. Okay. That way we can then add back the things that you actually are good at. You are special about them. And to you, and here's in the, this is a a special report coming in from um, the news center. Until you can truly feel and believe the truth about yourself, it doesn't matter how much you speak it over yourself. Until you can internalize it and make it a part of you, it doesn't matter how much is said around you. People come up to you all the time like, you're so pretty. How are you so, seriously, stop it. You're, you're just, you're too much. You're so, you could hear that all day long. And I do. But until you're fixed, that's just another layer on top of it. So you underneath all that feel like, I'm an ugly POS piece of something. Get your head out of the gutter. Anyways, so I'm a, I'm an ugly piece of something and you believe that, and there's a broken in the part in you that somehow you feel that you're ugly, and the person adds on top of you, you're just so beautiful, you're so cute. And all you feel is they don't know the real me. 
and they just <laughs> broke, right? So that's the issue I have with this. We got we got to declutter, right? We got to declutter all this stuff so we can get to the realness of who we really are and really grow up on that. But we got this culture that says, nah, none of that's none of that's necessary. Let's not do that. Let's just, let's just get another social media. Let's get something else cool out there and hide behind that, hide behind this. Right? That's what we that's what we think is important. How we get through it is just motivate, 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 motivate. No, I say heal, 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 then grow, grow, grow. And and, and um I've always had this, like I told you guys before, you got to in this, I coach and teach and all this stuff, you got to attack your brokenness, attack those areas where you're, where you're um, hurting, right? So give me, I'll give you an example physically about this, okay? So you go to the gym and you're working out and you're getting, getting those biceps in the chest and, you know, I mean, I'm, let's see, I'm probably, I'm trying to do the quick math. I'm not great at math in public, but I'm doing it right now in my head. Yeah, I think it's like 99.999% bodybuilder. I think that's I think that's fact. I think that that's exactly what it is 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 that that's how much bodybuilder I am. But I go to the gym. Let's say I go to the gym and I and I go in there and I'm like I love chest and I love biceps and I love back and I love triceps and this that and the other. But I'm like I keep skipping leg day. You know, I go in there and I I do all this stuff, and you see these people in the gym. You go in there, and you, you know, you see them, and they they look all jacked up top, and they got toothpick for legs, and it look like if you know someone like literally sneezed, they snap a leg, and they, you know, somebody snap their leg if they walk by somebody sneezing, like, and somebody's like just ding, right, right. That's what it kind of looks like in a lot of people in gym, the gym is because leg day for most people is hard and terrible, and it's it's not fun. Right, because we like going in there, pumping our biceps up and looking at that in the mirror. Now, this is especially for guys. Guys love looking at the oh, girls are looking at me. I'm wearing my cutoff shirt today. Can't do that, at Planet Fitness. You get lunked out. You get lunked out of here if you do that, at Planet Fitness. All right. So, anyways, but but then you don't want to do your legs. Why? Why don't you want to do your legs? Why don't you want? Why don't we want to squat? And this is just, this is an example. The reason why is because it's hard. You don't want to do the things that are hard. You want to do the things that are easy. It's the, it's the, the path of least resistance that we go after. If we, we go into the gym, even everything that we approach in life is the path of least resistance. But struggle, the struggle is where it's at. The struggle is where we actually grow the most. So if you are truly suffering, quote unquote, in the gym because you your legs are not uh, developed in the way that they can lift the weights and easy enough, your mind says, that hurts. I don't want to do that. And then you make an excuse and say, I think I'm going to hit my chest today because I don't know this. You got to get this. I, 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 went, I went from my nerd voice to my mancho voice. I don't know what happened there. But anyway, I'll go to my mancho voice. I hit my chest today because I just, you know, I don't feel like I need, I'm getting enough work on a Tuesday. So then you get back in there and get it. Reality is, at least the path, the path of release resistance, I didn't want to hit my legs because it was hard. But instead, what I need to do, is, as, a, as a person that struggled, would struggle with my legs, I need to hit my legs more because my body is going to respond based upon me developing my weakest point, not my strongest point. Uh, let me say it again. I reversed it. I can do that in my mind. Reverse it. Okay? But anyways, you're going to grow when you develop the weakest point not the strongest point. Okay, you're going to get more growth when you develop the weakest point, not the strongest point. So that's the same it is, as it is in your spiritual life or in, your, in your, your mental life. You need to attack the areas that are a struggle for you, not the areas that you're strong at. Okay? If you're, if you're a great listener, don't be like, I'm such a good listener. And that's just, you know, that's God's gift to me. I was born to listen. I was put on this planet to be a listener and everybody knows that I'm the best listener there is. God gave me a set of ears. Actually, you know, he, he could give me one and instead he gave me two. That's, you know, that's old saying. It says God gave you one mouth, but two ears. 
That's because I'm a listener. I don't use these ears to listen because that's where I'm strong. But the reality is, maybe, yeah, you could be a great listener, but maybe you need to work on your speech. Maybe you're, you're so insecure about the way you talk and you don't want to talk, so you just listen. Or maybe the other way around. Maybe you just talk and you never listen. If you keep doing the thing that's strong for you, you're always going to be weak. But when you attack your weaknesses, everything elevates, even your strengths. I said said kind of for string. I don't know. So that's why that's just what I'm getting at. It's like we need to attack the brokenness, attack the issue, attack the weakness, develop those. Right? You go to work and you're like, you're really good at this area, but you're really bad at this area. I'm challenging you to attack the things that you're bad at. You'll be you'll elevate every part of your life when you do this. You see, that, that's, that's the cool thing. Then you'll start being noticed and seen for the true strength that you have, the true special part of you, not just what you're faking, right? And, and, and I, I, I love, like, in society right now, we just keep adding things on, right? We keep adding. There's so many, like, I, I listen to all different types of music, and, and um, I love, you know, I love just discovering new music but the, the names of of the new artist are just it's just getting out of hand i mean what are we doing i mean back when i was you know growing up like again i sound like an old man when i say it but you know you you had like your rapper was like tupac okay biggie dr dre you know it was it was it was super coolio it was super simple, right? Now it's like little machine gun teddy bear. I mean, it's if you can put little and baby in front of anything, and it's it's a, you're a rapper, right? Little baby. I get, I remember when little baby was just a little baby. Like that's how old I am. It's like when you said, "Hey, little baby," there's a little baby. I was like, "Oh, little <laughs> little baby," like like oh burp, little baby, not a little baby rapper. And I'm not making fun of little baby, whatever. And maybe there's a rapper, and probably isn't a rapper named Little Baby. But I'm not making fun of that. But I'm just saying, like, we're getting to the point where we're adding all this stuff on because we want to be, we want to be special. Like I was thinking, like, what you know, what would be my rapper, rapper name? And I think I'm gonna go with Little Baby Nipple. No, little, I'm gonna go Little Baby Nipple Nipples. Nip, Little Baby Nippy Nipples. That's that's what I'm gonna do. Little Baby Nippy Nipples. That's my rap name, right? I mean. That kind of sounds like drum DNC, but it doesn't matter because I'm little baby nippy nipples. Or you can call me LBNN for short. I'm LBNN, little baby nip. No, wait, wait, I got a little baby nippy nipples. That's kind of a tongue twister. Anyways, my rap, but that's what we do. If, 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 but what I'd rather be known at is, at, as is just Anton. Anton, right? The best version of Ton, me. Like, I'd shorten it even more. You can just call me Ton. Hey, Ton. You can call me, mm. You know, when you say, hey, mm. And I'll be like, yo, what up? Hey, mm. Because I want, I want less. I want less on me. I mean, Little Baby Nippy Nipples is actually a pretty good rap name. And when you can call me that too, you can go, hey, Little Baby Nippy Nippy Nipples. Little Baby Nippy Nipples. Little Baby Nippy Nipples. Little baby nippy nipples. Dude, say that fast because it's kind of fun and it's a tongue twister. But the, 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 I mean, this is exactly what I'm talking about, though. It's like, why do we got to hide behind so much? I mean, you see it everywhere. You, you know, let's say, say that I was going on a date, right? I'm giving you this little example. I'm, I'm married, so don't call my wife. I'm like, I heard Anton's podcast and he was talking about going, okay, is everything okay? I mean, little baby nippy nipples goes on dates, brothers and sisters, and dates with his wife. But whatever, let's say going on a date, right? And you see somebody out, and you know, and you see maybe you saw me out, and I was I had my hair all spiked up, and I got my bling bling in my ears, and my bling bling in my nose, and my bling bling, you know, I got forty five chains on, and I got the most expensive suit on, and I got all this stuff. The thing of it is, 
if I'm doing that, I'm hiding something because I'm flashing too much. There's too many things, all this stuff going off. It's saying there's something else going on. Typically, that means you're dealing with a very insecure person. I'm not saying you can't have the nice stuff. I mean, <laughs> chain. I mean, okay, this one's fake. This is real. And let's talk about this room. This is real gold, but it's got my dad in it, okay? My dad passed in 2011, and some of his ashes in here. Little creep, okay? Little creep, creep, okay? But little baby nippy nipples has some ashes of his pops in his gold chain. I mean, that is super baller. There's not, I bet, I bet there's not one rapper out there repping his dad on his neck. That's how baller I am. I mean, so get with it. But let's say I'm out and I'm just doing it up like that. I'm hiding something. Okay, and like I said, you know, you can have nice stuff, but you and you hide behind that's a problem. The other thing is with ladies, man, ladies out there painting their face ups like clowns, putting all this stuff on. The reality is, is it's scary. It's like false advertisement. You could see some girl, she just brow, looking all. And then she goes home, she takes off the fake eyelashes, takes out the, you know, takes out the fake hair, takes out the makeup. Right, and before you know, you, you you know you're looking at someone. You're like, and it's like crickets. Like, wh- what? Hey, where did the person go? That you we, you aren't the same. Th- that's what's going on. I mean, I get it. And you girls, you you can put makeup on. You can do whatever you want. I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what drink time. Mm. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just saying it's a bit of false advertisement. It's a bit of like, it's a lot of work. I mean, for you all, it's a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of work. And so I just, I think about that and I'm like, what do we, when we see that, it's usually they're hiding, they're hiding something. And I understand women, you have a hard time, you know, you're competing with everything around you and this, that, and the other. Guys, we just kind of don't care as much. You know, because you mean girls, if we're, we're not going to get into the relationships, I think, because that's another podcast, but we're going to talk about that too. But girls, obviously, they're they're coming after and trying to attract men, which men are visual people. So we're like, oh, I see that. I like it. I want it. I want that. Whatever that is, is that's beautiful. I, I got to have that over there. That's what I need. I don't know what accent that is. It's, don't get all... Hey, you, you can't say it like that because you, you, you're making fun of someone. No. Sana, oh, wait, I said Sana. Okay, if you don't know, I listen to Chris D'Elia a lot. So if I say something that's in Chris D'Elia's, like realm of comedy, I'm not trying to rip him off. I'm actually paying, paying homage to him and, and, and saying, you're awesome and you crack me up and you're the funniest person I think I've ever, ever heard in my entire life. Um, and I love it, okay? His and I's humor are... Um, Literally same, okay? And um, I'm older than him, so I, I think that I have a right to say that my I invented that comedy. Um, so he's still in for me. No joking, joking. But I do I love the way he you know does his comedy, and, and it's very similar to mine. So if, if it sounds the same, then whatever. So if I say so, so, you know, so awesome or whatever, that's because Crystalia says it, and I think it's so awesome, okay? And now all you Christians are like, Crystalia. <laughs> oh, that's not a Christian speaker. Uh, he, matter of fact, he said the F word. Okay, he's not going, if you're going to listen to him, understand, he's not a Christian speaker, he's a comedian, and he makes me laugh. He's going to say cuss words, and it makes me laugh. If I offend you, then you shouldn't listen to Chris D'Elia. Okay, enough about that. Back to the realness. Back to people, okay? We pay you do all this to paint our faces up, put all this stuff on and whatever. It's fake, okay? I'm going to tell a story. There used to be these things, and I saw them in Victoria's Secrets. Really, just going there with my wife. And they were these silicone uh, boobies. And girls would put them over their real boobies. And then they put their bra over top of the real boobies. And then the fake silicone boobies. 
that are external from the body. And then they put the bra on it, and it made their boobies look bigger. Okay, this is this has been 15 years, 20, no, more than that, 20 years ago. My wife and I have been married 20 years. That goes in there, yeah, probably 15 to 20 years ago, right? So anyways, I go in there, see those things. I'm like, what the heck's that for? And then I realized that what it was for is to make your boobies look bigger. But I'm thinking about that. And if you're married to a woman, because, you know, you shouldn't be having, you shouldn't be seeing people's boobies without being married. It just messes your head up. We'll talk about that another time when it comes to sex and that, you know, whatever. But it just messes your head up, especially us guys. We can't be seeing too many boobies. Boobies, boobies mess your head up, okay? When you're born on this planet, you, start, you, you suckle one, right? And so you're staring at it like this. Uh, this is my theory. You're staring at the, the boobie. Now it's your mom's boob, so that, that's a little gross. But anyways, you're staring at this boob. You don't know whose boob it is. You just... I mean, forever. And then you develop a, a habit and, a, and, 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 and a, an addiction to the boobie. And then they, they pull you off. Like, All right? And that's how we... All right? We cry about it, and we want more of the boobie. Right? We get it. I think I'm blaming moms for all of our boob obsessions, because from day one, I'm just staring at the booby, right? So when we get older, of course we're gonna look at the booby. We've been born to look at the booby, right? We soon, from day one. So okay, so I digress. So we got these silicone boobies, and women obviously they know that guys are addicted to the booby. So they go in and they get themselves some silicone boobies to put over top of their other boobies. And then they put the bra on top of that. Now imagine you're married to that or, you you know, you you, you, you come home and, and the wife, like, man, boobies look good. And then, and then through the day, you know, here's what happens. I, I, here's what happens. You know, this part, when you put something against it, just hold your hand on your boobies. It starts sweating like 10 seconds. You put silicone parts on there, it starts to sweat too. Before you know it, them boobies are no longer looking like this. Them looking like this. Them silicone boobies start sliding around. This, down, one, you have a booby on your stomach. You, you get a booby on your thigh. You, t- you keep walking, you have a booby on the ground. Duh, duh, duh. Right? Sliding booby on the ground. That's what happens. But all because we want to fake it until we make it. We want them boobies to look good. And so we got booby on back. Booby could slide all around and have a bat boob. And people be like, what? what's going on? There's a booby in the middle of her chest, on both sides of her chest, and one on her back. There is booby. She that, that girl have four booby. Now most guys guys be like, yeah, that girl, hot. <laughs> I don't know, huh? She got a four booby. We're going back to right. I, I get why women do it because as guys, we're just blah, blah, blah. but again, we add stuff on. We think that that's gonna be the answer to whatever these girls think. If they think see my boobies, they'll take that. No, taking things, taking stripping it down. One thing I told my wife whenever I met her, we met in the military. Um, excuse me, go back to the drink, dude. Jeez. Hmm. Yeah, but we met in the military, and the cool thing about that was she she couldn't wear makeup because, you know, in the military, when we're in the tech school, you're not allowed. And I was wearing, you know, they shaved my head, and I was wearing all free and camouflage, so I couldn't fly it up at all. So we met in the best circumstances. We both looked like crap. I mean, not her as much as me, but, I mean, seriously, though, we both looked at, like, a bare, bare minimum. We looked at, we looked like, you know what we looked like? We looked like us. The real us. And we met that way, and I was like, hey, that real girl looks real hot being just her. That was, I mean, you can't hardly script that any better. That was the best way for us to actually meet and hang out was the real versions. is like just, even just physically, just seeing her, the real her, the real her. And I was like attracted to the real her. You know, then she did makeup and stuff like that. I thought, oh, that's really pretty. But honestly, I remember telling her she looked better just natural. That's one thing that I was really attracted to about my wife from the beginning was just how naturally beautiful she was. And I never would have seen that 
had I met her in any of the circumstances because the world said that she needed to be this. Put this on, put this on, put this on. But I met her in, I met her in camouflage before camo was cool, okay? Before, this is before TLC was, don't go chasing waterfalls with left, left eye, right? When her camo, RIP, left eye. <sighs> Little baby, nippy nipples, says RIP, left eye, because she was awesome. Anyways. When I when I salute left eyes, I do that. Anyways, I met my wife and before camo was cool and and she had no makeup on and I was like, Sahab, babe. And this is before Chris D'Elia, so and if I and so I didn't know what Sahat was, but my wife was Sahat. Okay. And um so so anyways, going back to this thing is is the, obviously when we strip it down, we get to see what really people are. But when we mess it up, we get the fake nips and the fake boobies and all over the place. And, and we're just trying, we're trying, trying. That's not the real us. You see, that this is, we do the same thing in religion. You see, because we, we paint ourselves as holier than thou, that our church has it figured out, and, and this is the way, and, and then, then, you know, this is the type of worship we do, and this is the type of this. And the, the problem of it is, is when we put stuff, we add stuff onto God, so the word says don't take away or add to anything, right? But when we add stuff onto it, it actually cheapens it. We think it makes it better. We think if we could, we could just make it even more emotional, Right, we could just do more, you know, more stuff, more, I mean, more things to make us think that God is bigger. God is already the biggest. But what happens? We keep adding stuff on, and it break, adds to religion, and religion breaks down. Right, we do the same thing through our our faith. We keep adding stuff to it. Our, our religion is again with the seizures of the tongue. Okay. Okay? Anyways, I've got it straight now. We do the same thing in our religion. You know, we do the same thing with Jesus. We paint Jesus into this, even, even the physical paintings of Jesus are this white, white skin. Wait. Oh, white skin Jesus. How is you do? You peer up at the sun and you do this with your hands and you have that really pretty robe on with your white skin and your blue eyes and your wavy sandy colored hair just peering up into the sun oh I just love the way you look so Caucasian yeah I said it Caucasian Jesus not real brothers and sons of preachers it's not real do you understand that Jesus, the word says that he was not pleasant to look at, right? Like, so, so this paintings of him that look so beautiful, not real. And his skin was probably brown since he was from an area where people's skin was brown, Right? I mean, you look at it and you're like, oh, he was Jewish, right? Yeah, but he's from an area where they, people aren't Caucasian white. They aren't American. Okay? But that's how we depict Jesus in this area and around the people. Now, you know, and, and again, another thing, I, he wasn't African American either. He was a Jewish man. Not, and the, kind, the word says not attractive. But we add even just the simple things when we, we try to we try to make it into what we like and make it fit our little minds to be beautiful like we want it, we miss the point. It breaks down. Right? It breaks down. We do that with our worship services. You know, every time we add stuff to it and try to make it more than it's supposed to be. God is already enough. He doesn't need you to make it any more than it is. It is. Just being in the presence of God is enough. Right? For sure. You see, Jesus, and just think about this. Jesus is brown. You see, if you, you can paint your face any way you want, but don't paint his. We can be a bunch of clowns, but he's not. Right? 
And see, I was starting to think about this even in our faith, you know, in Matthew, in Matthew 23, it goes into it. So it starts talking about, you know, the, the Jesus is talking about, you know, hey, you you like to be called a rabbi. You, you know, matter of fact, somebody here says, you say, everything you do for, is for show. On the arms, they talk about the priests and stuff like that. On the arms, they were extra wide prayer boxes with scriptures and verses inside. They put them inside there so that they were big ones so that they could pull them out, right, and tell people, like, this is the this is the prayer box, right? This is what I got. They wear robes with extra long tassels so people would see it. And they love to sit at the heads of tables of banquets and in the seats of honor in the synagogues, right? They love sitting there. Look at me. I'm in the seat of honor, right? They love to receive respect, respectful greetings as they walk in marketplaces. Oh, there's the rabbi. Hey, rabbi. Rabbi. Hey. The little curlies, right? They like to be called rabbi, it says. It says, and then it goes on, it says, don't let anyone call you rabbi. For you only have one teacher, and of all of you are equals as brothers and sisters. I love that. Brothers and sisters, we are all equal, right? As don't, don't, uh, don't address anyone on earth as father, for only God in heaven is father, right? And that's not talking about like father like your dad. This is, and then people say, you know, don't, don't you call your dad father because it says in the Bible. No, what's talking about don't, don't place that father, right? The father of the faith. Don't call someone father because there's only your God in heaven is your, your, your father, your, your, your actual father, the one you go to, right? And it says, don't let anyone call you teacher. And this is still talking about the faith, right? I want to call you teacher for you only have one teacher and that's the Messiah, and it says, the greatest among you must be a servant. But those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who are humbled themselves will, humble themselves will be exalted. I mean, that's, that's major stuff. Like these titles that we put ourselves, you know, we put titles on ourselves, guys, that actually limits you. When you call yourself something, like in the church, everyone wants to call them, I'm a prophet, pastor, pastor. It's not like Sam. I'm somebody. I'm somebody. I'm somebody. I'm somebody. Sam. Like like in the church, that's everyone wants us. We want to tell everybody what we are. I'm the prophet, healer, pastor, pastor. You know, deacon, brother, sister, mother, Mary. It's not a cussing and Christian. But the reality is. He says, put those titles aside. Because what titles do, it, it actually limits you. When you want to call yourself, it's just, again, it's adding something to you that you don't need. I'm a, uh, I'm a healer. Oh, I'm a healer. You need to come to me if you want some healing. Because I'm the healer in this church. If you knew how much healing I did, you'd be coming to me. Because I'm the healer. They actually call me Mr. Healer. I've healed so many people that uh, they changed my last name to Hill. <laughs> H-E-A-L, not H-I-L-L. Uh, I'm Mr. Hill. <laughs> no. No, you're not. That's the thing, right? When you, when you title yourself, you're limiting what you can do. You can do more than just heal. You can do it all. You know, put off the titles. You don't need the title to be who God called you to be. That's why I joke about when you call me Revton, because I don't want to be called pastor, preacher, whatever, deacon, brother, sister, mother, Mary. Like I said, I don't want to be none of that. I want to be Anton Payne, a follower after the way. I want to be, I want to be your friend. I want to be your brother, your sister. I can't be your sister. <laughs> I want to be your brother, right? That makes me want to laugh when I have a fake laugh. That makes me want to laugh. But that, that's what I'm saying is that we got to get out of that title mentality. You know, that's even in our social life. We don't need just to be, you know, I can't just be the podcast guy or the, you know, the world dent, dent technician or the cafe. I can't just be that, right? That can't just be the title guy, right? I just got to go for Anton, right? When you title yourself, you limit yourself. You see, they'll start thinking about this whole thing is we all were created in the image of God. Uniquely created, though, right? That's the cool thing. We were uniquely created. 
So you all have this purpose and this passion and this this whole thing placed in you. It's in your code, in your DNA, like it's been placed in you, right? So inside you is all potential. This is what I believe, right? Inside of each and every one of us is all potential. And so I started to look up like, you know, scientifically what that means. And it says that there's, there's, you know, the types of forms of energy is there's, there's kinetic and there's potential. And I, I knew this, I remember this from like being in, you know, whatever school, elementary school, um, and, or I don't know, maybe it's a little longer later than that, but I remember hearing these things, but, um, most of us stay in our potential state, right? And when we add stuff on us, our potential state gets, actually the kinetic part of us gets harder and harder to activate because when we're, when we just, kinetic is movement of energy. It's the moving energy, right? And so when we're in potential state, there's no movement. It's just what's locked inside of us. So I have all this like potential in me and all this DNA that's placed in me and all this purpose that was placed into me. And from the beginning, God created me and said, hey, Anton, you're going, you got this. And he placed it in me, put me on this planet for a purpose and a plan, right? With all this potential. But he said, you need to go and do it. Go, go, activate it, go. Potential energy doesn't do anything. It just sits there. And so, so that's what's what happens when we add all this fake stuff on top of us. It actually locks us into this, just staying in this potential state. We don't ever get to expose our realness and move into who we're supposed to be. We never, we never actually go anywhere. We just keep adding things so that we can look a certain way, but never actually become anything. That's my issue with all this. We stay in potential state. Right. So that's why I want to strip it down so that we actually have the ability to move. It's like putting a bunch of weight on you, put a bunch of weight, 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 on top of you, on top of you, on top of you. And then they say, okay, now run. You can't. That's the same way when we add all this stuff, all this fake stuff, all right? I did you gotta be beautiful, you gotta be all this, you gotta look this way, you gotta act this way, you gotta do all this. You add all this stuff in your faith, you got you gotta be this type of Christian, you gotta do this church, you gotta look like this, you gotta wear skinny black jeans and wear black shirts. And my son brought this up. He goes, Have you noticed, Dad, that every like Christian, like, you know, worship leader wears like skinny, you know, jeans and black shirts and whatever? And I said, Let me tell you something, Javen. A lot of times they're hiding something, maybe weight. They put on a little extra weight and they would start trying to slender themselves by under the clothes. But the reality is, is, is it that we're hiding something, right? We all look a certain way. We're all trying to look a certain way. But the, we got to truly strip it off to become who we're supposed to be. I've got this new like, like outlook on life. Like there's a, I told my son even this weekend, we're out and we're hiking and I threw the video on here, but we're out hiking and then we come to this place and these, uh, we're up in this mountain and there's these rocks that are like super steep in, in, in this river and they got like moss that's gone over top of them and it's a, it's a perfect natural slide. And I'm standing there and I'm out there and there's other people walking around or whatever and I just strip down to my underwear and I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm a 42 year old man with a crazy dad bod, too much fat here, right? But I just, I'm not going to let opportunity pass me by. Potential energy in that situation would have looked at it and go, man, that'd be cool. That would have been awesome if we would have slid down that. The kinetic energy, the actual movement of energy is what I think we're called to because the word says go, not to stay, but to go. I, kinetic energy in that whole energy in that whole situation says strip down to your underwear and slide down the flipping rocks, you rock star. Just do it. So that's what I did. Why right? this way? Every opportunity you have, you need to do. You need to go for it. Take that chance. Go for it. Strip it off. Not your clothes necessarily. Not always. Everyone's like, "Well, I listen to Anton's podcast. He said get naked." And so I've been naked ever. No, I'm not saying that. There's times we got to strip down to your drawers and do some stuff. I'm saying take off the fake stuff. Right? Get into that kinetic energy part of yourself. I hear people tell me all the time, like, I just got bad knees. It's genetic. Our whole family's got bad knees. I'm like, no, your whole family's about 600 pounds overweight. So therefore, you have bad eating habits. Your family has a genetic issue of eating badly. Therefore, your knees are like, mm, not meant to carry this much weight. So I'm going to quit. Right? Are people like, wow, my whole family, we're just, we've all, you know, generations, we've always been poor. We're, no, 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 no. 
That's not true. What's happened is you all believe something. You added a bunch of crap and you made excuses like we talked about last time. And, and you put all this stuff on top of you and you've stayed broken. Unravel that crap and fix and heal the issue and then become who you're supposed to be and heal and change. Right? That's the only way to change. Right? My wife, um, I'm going back to her. Let me get a drink real quick. Mm. My wife, uh, a few, probably, I don't know, 15 years ago. Everything's like 15 years ago. So it was a good time. My wife uh, had this idea, going back to the Victoria's Secret thing, but she had this idea. She was like, you know, constantly, going back to the, the booby thing, constantly, I, you know, we put a bra on, and you can see some nips through it. Going back to my, my rap name of Little Baby Nippy Nipple, right? Little Baby Nippy Nipple. And, you know, when you get those little you know, nippy nipples, and you start they like that, right? Guys get them too, right? We'd have, ding, ding. Get like, I always say whenever it gets super cold, I can cut glass with my nips, right? Like double seven, like dun, 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 cutting that glass, reaching in, getting something. I could do that when it's nippy nipple, right? But anyways, my wife is always like, oh, I hate that, you know, you do, you do, you know, my wife's very modest. You don't want somebody looking at her nippy nipples, right? So she's like, let's put, you know, I want to invent something so you can put over your nipples. And I'm like, um, don't want to bring this up right now because it might be, but before Christ, I used to go to strip clubs and they would wear <laughs> little tassels and they would go, Spin them, right? Well, she's like, yeah, but I don't want tassels on my nips because then you can see the tassels even more than you can see my nips. So she's wanting to put these little things on there, right? And back in my day, I don't know if you still call it or not, but there was these, we would call the, the this right here, it's THOs. And this is going to be a little crude. So some of you that will listen, you might be like, I, I can't, I'm, I can't listen to this because it's not too, it's not Christian enough. If that's you, turn it off, okay? But we some call, it's called, THOs, which we would call titty hard ons. That's let's see if I can get one right now. Nope, nope. No, it's too warm in here. But you get a little titty titty hard on THO, right? And you'll poke ba-ding, ba-ding, right? That's what happens. My wife said instead we put the T the little things on so the THOs wouldn't work. So we start coming up with names. And one of the names we came up with was instead of THOs, we would say call them TH nos. So no titty hard-ons. TH knows. That was a great name. And I might come up with we might my wife is a genius. We might put some TH knows on the market. Now they have pasties. We found that out that we went into I went into again, we were in Victoria's Seekers, looked up and they saw these little pasties up there, freaking flesh colored little band-aids they put on your nipples and stole our idea. So you got that, okay? And I'm gonna tell you that story. And the other the other name for our TH knows. Was um, Invisinips. Get it? <laughs> Invisinips. You take the nips away, you make them invisible. Invisinips. Right? That's, that's, that's good. So we might make a TH no or a Visinip. Well, I don't know yet. But then another story I want to tell you, and I'm getting to a point here real quick. Another story is my dad was telling me one day, I was hanging out with him, he was in the 90s, and he's like, you know, I actually had the idea for the, uh, the hair dryer. Like, I, I, I invented the hairdryer. I'm like, looking around, I'm like, we live in a common ranch house. I mean, we do okay, but pretty sure you didn't invent a hairdryer, Dad. He's like, no, I had the idea of the hairdryer before it came out. I'm like, don't know if that's true, but it's pretty awesome. But the point is to both of the stories is the idea is nothing without the kinetic energy to make it happen. Your ideas are literally valueless unless they have potent, the, the kinetic energy behind them to actually push them into fruition to make them happen, right? So TH knows and Invisinips and the hairdryer, someone else did because they had the kinetic energy to do it. They weren't, they weren't sitting on their potential. They weren't hiding behind anything. And I just an idea, right? A lot of times I'll think, oh, I've got a great idea and I'll do this and this and this. But the thing of it is, is my idea is just another thing, another layer on top of my board that's already broken. I'm too scared to step out and actually do it. I need to strip all that crap away and quit having ideas and quit saying this and saying that and just actually figure out why I'm afraid to go forward with something. Why I'm afraid to expose who I really am. Why I'm afraid to, for people to see who I really am. 
That's what I really got to figure out. Then I can take one of these ideas and put it into kinetic energy and actually make it happen. That's what we want to do, right? You see, but here's the thing. I think this is an OG problem. I mean, like a real, this is an OG problem. Not, not this. I mean, this is, this is an OG problem. Like original gangster problem. This is an OG problem. All the way back to Adam. Here's the thing. We read in, in, in Gen- Genesis 3 where the fall of mankind, and we put, oh, they, they just ate the apple. They took that apple and they just said, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it so hard. Even though God said, don't eat it, I'm going to eat this apple. That's what we think. But the reality is, is no. No. What happened was Adam actually had piled on this stuff that he believed about his wife and himself and, and that he thought this other world would be better if he actually did these things that he wasn't supposed to do. He started adding stuff to him other than what God had said about him, and he fell for the imitation version of himself. That's the original sin, is mistaken identity. He forgot who he was. You hear me? That's what happens to us. When we forget who we are, we fall. Genesis 3 is about a man forgetting and a woman forgetting who they were, who they were created to be, and trying to add stuff on them to make themselves better, and it did not work. That's the sin that we keep, every one of us keep falling for. That's what we keep going back to. Mistaken identity, mistaken identity, mistaken identity, right? I'm the MF, and now I'm gonna tell you what mother the 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 mother stands for. I know it stands for mother grades, right? I understand that, but what I'm telling you is, I'm the mother father greatest. I'm the mother father greatest. You know why? Because when my mother and father had me. I'm the only one like me. I'm the mother, father, greatest. I'm the only Anton Payne on this planet that's like me. There might be other Anton Paynes out there, their name. There's other men out there. There's other husbands out there. There's other dads out there. There's other pastors out there. But I'm the only one like me. And you're the only person like you. And do not let that go. That is your greatest strength. Stop adding stuff to it. You're the mother, father, greatest. You're the great, you are the mother, father, greatest. Get that. Strip it all, all this other stuff away. And get back to the basic version of yourself. You hear me? Do you, do you hear me? Because this is how you change the world. This is why you are here. This is not me blowing smoke, trying to motivate you. This is me telling you the truth. Stop faking it until you make it. Become the realest version of yourself, and you've made it. And you are exactly who you're created to be. You. You. Isn't that awesome that God didn't create you to be like something else? He created you to be you. And I love it. I love it. Remember, Genesis 3 is not about a fruit. It's about a man and a woman Losing sight of who they were created to be. And we do that to ourselves every day when we fake it. Guys, we're better than that. Don't fall for the imitation. Don't add stuff on. Strip it down. Attack your brokenness. And become the mother, father, greatest version of you and I promise you you 
will have success. And you'll be happier than you ever, ever have been. And you'll find freedom that you didn't think was possible. All because you were you. All right. Episode 502. Mother, father, greatest. Peace preaches. <laughs>